welcome back to another episode of the Scottish Well Fishing. Today, after a long time, we've been waiting to share this video with everybody. But before we get into it, there's a couple of people that I need to thank right for the offset. One, when I picked up this boat, um, I didn't have the right vehicle to go and collect it, so my mate Davey helped me out, and I can't kind of thank him enough for that, or it wouldn't have happened. And then, probably on top of that, Brian Lawrence, he's been right with me right for the start. He's given me a lot of advice, he's got a lot of experience, and I can't kind of thank him enough for it. He also made an eight hour round trip to come and help me buy this boat, so again, I'm in debt to him for that, can't thank him enough. And also for Ross for giving me a hand to get it back to the standard that it's at today. Without further ado, here it is. Right guys, so just a bit of history about how I came to obtain this boat. Um, I actually wanted a boat for a number of years but I had never made the move and I would never jumped in and done it financially and time wise and work wise. Um, and last year me and Ross were invited on a, a trip out with Brian Lawrence for the weekend of uh, skate fishing and kind of caught the bug and I thought you know what, maybe it's the right time in my life to buy a boat and it could enhance the fishing and give us something else to do so finally took the plunge but on the road to getting there um, a lot of countless hours on the internet looking for boats um, a lot of support for Brian trying to find boats there was actually one instance where I tried to buy a, a boat and I think it was Portsmouth way maybe Cornwall, they were all down south anyway compared to us um, and 50 minutes later it was sold to just really really struggle to get them so in saying that it's a um, Predator 165 Sea Angler it's a 2011 with a 2011 Mercury 60 on the back of it um, I actually got in touch with Douglas Marine where they were built and um, checked back and found the previous owners or whatnot. As when I picked this boat up in particular, it wasn't in the best of condition. It had just been kind of, I'd been in the sea and it had been, it had been left basically. It just hadn't been looked after. The engine and the auxiliaries and that were in good condition, but um, the actual condition of the boat itself was just all cosmetic. But it was needing a tidy up. So making my way around the boat, the next thing I want to talk about is the hull. When I first got it, it wasn't in good condition, so we used a hull cleaner, numerous washes, um, and then we buffed it back. We are cutting compound, which takes a lot longer than you would think. It was then given a coat of polish and a coat of sealer. And at this point, I actually need to pause, and it's the man behind the camera, it's Ross. I've got to rely on him for this because I didn't really do anything, he done it all. So that's the reason it looks like that. And it came up absolutely night and day. And if I've got any pictures of it previously, I will drop them in just now. So moving on for that, the boat originally came with some anti foul on it, but it was white and it wasn't in good condition. The boat had been uh, launched to the beach on and off the trailer so there's a lot of marks and stuff. I opted to go for the dark blue, it's actually a racing anti-fill because this boat's going to live on the trailer, it does live indoors but it will be on and off the trailer and it's very hard wearing so we be to test that out but the advice I was given is that was the correct stuff to use. And then moving on, anybody that knows what a Predator 165 Sea Angler should look like, it shouldn't look like this. Um, this is our website scottishwellfishing.co.uk and obviously our logo and and the stripe that was put on it. It was done by DS Graphics and Falkirk, who I'll also link in the description below. David's a great guy and really helped us out with this. I just wanted it to look a wee bit different. Um, yeah, just to make it mine, so it stands out a wee bit. Um, it wasn't nothing against the original graphics. I just wanted to change it. So yeah, moving on for there. important bits of power plant here it's a 60 horsepower mercury it's a 2011 like i say when i got it it was running fine and um, since then we've um, serviced it oil plugs filter um, dropped the gearbox off done the impeller and put the new gearbox oil in 
um, all the service kit was supplied by Pacer Marine uh, I'll put a link in the description down below for that as well yeah, and both engines um, yep yeah, uh, ram seal changed that as well um, for the hydraulic lift so all good to go tidied up the cables put a new fuel line on which we'll talk about when we get into the boat uh, four blade stainless steel prop came with it so you get to prove if that's any good and then moving on to the auxiliary this didn't come with the boat i picked this up recently it's actually a five horsepower df5 suzuki um, ideally i think the rating for the boat was a six horsepower but came at a good deal and is what it is so i'll use it just now if i need to change it i will uh, again service kit by pacer marine plug oil impeller yep just give everything the once over and so it's all good to go and um, just when we're here you can see down the bottom there i'm running a Lorance HDS 9 Gen 3 uh, that's the transducer bracket down there for the down scan and also the GPS there uh, just when we're back here you can see that I didn't buy the bracket because Lorance have made my own so Let's see if that works moving on so coming inside the boat um, just want to talk about a couple of things that modifications that we've done here so carries a 25 litre fuel tank as standard um, I find a water separator in there and also when we first bought the boat the fuel line used to come through here and lie down the back of the bulkhead here and it used to rattle and it's left some marks so since then the fuel lines are all brand new and they've all been ran inside so the water separator and the filter and everything's back there out of the way the only thing I still need to do is I'm going to change this, this hatch to the same as what's on the back of the seats there um, it's been glassed in um, it's one of the last jobs I've got to do I just think I'll tidy it up a bit better also the previous owner um, had the, the rear bench seat for the boat which I still have but when they fitted it to the back here they had drilled um, a lot of holes that were unnecessary so I've done all the proper repairs but I've got this just this stripe over the back just to tidy it up a wee bit and keep in with the colour scheme of the boat so yeah still a couple of jobs to do but definitely a big improvement keeping the lines and everything out of the way for when you're fishing so you're not getting tangled in anything right so moving up to the front of the boat here one of the other things I wanted to talk about was the Mercury control unit for the engine um, obviously electronic trim control key safety cut off but that very st well it is a standard piece of equipment when I mentioned I bought this boat I'd been in the sea so this was in a really bad condition just with any is it osmosis is that what you call it <coughs> yeah it just it wasn't good so I stripped it down I gave it a quick paint it could be done better and it will be done better one thing I will say to you is it's very doable to strip it down and paint it yourself but be careful when you're setting your cables back up because it can be a bit of a nightmare there's a wee kind of centrifugal clutch disc in there that's not a clutch it's like just a disc um, it has to go back in the correct position for your fast idle etc but it certainly looks a lot better does the job i won't buy any new gear but all working well standard dash for predator um rpm trim gauge there additional volt gauges fitted and then moving on to the important bit Lawrence HDS9 Gen 3 fish finder and um, the Garmin's there and um, there's an additional backup um, as a fish finder but it'll be more used for GPS so on that front pretty much standard just tidied the place up a bit the boat is fitted with LED lights all the way around which is hard to show in this video so we'll maybe do a separate video about that uh, one of the other things I wanted to talk about is the boat is actually fitted for a VHF it did come with one I've took it out and after a bit of education to myself on that, thank you to Brian again, um, I'm going to replace it with a new one. They should be registered to you as a person with a MMSI number and you should also take part in the online course to make sure everyone's working, especially if you're going out in the sea and learning how to communicate properly. So just to touch on that. Moving down here, we've got the original light panel, um, anchor light, running lights, cabin lights, bilge pump and then I've got my two fish finders on the bottom one. So all the wiring's been checked, double checked, fused properly with two of the volt meters here. Moving down safety wise, we've got a fire extinguisher on board. Um, we've also just took us out of the cover with a first aid kit. And all, as always, please, 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 we see so many people doing it just because you think you're on a boat and having a good day out. You need to wear your life jacket. And one thing that I learned last year as well, always referencing Brian here, but make sure it's rated for you. I'm a big guy. I was probably wearing a, a life jacket that was wrong for me. If you can wear one, you must wear one, but you should also make sure you're getting the right one for yourself. Just a quick tip on that. Um, one other thing to mention up here is both seats uh, came from the factory with the under storage and the two front seats with the cushions there. They've got storage underneath them as well. We've got 
Um, our main crank battery, and we've got a, an auxiliary battery running for the fish finders, the lights. We've got a light bar on top on the bridge that I'm about to speak about in a minute. Um, and that's about it really, I've got some stuff stored away. Um, only other thing I wanted to touch about was the windows. When they, when we picked up the boat, they were scratched and I believe talking to other predator and uh, similar boat owners that scratching these windows is quite a common thing. So we actually buffed them out with some headlight polish, restorer. Um, like I say, everything that I've used, I'll put in a link down below because uh, I was advised to use it and it's, it's came out good for me. I know a lot of people like to change the windows, it's not something I'm looking to do just now, but um, they have certainly came up night and day and they look really, really good. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. One other thing just to touch on in here, you might be wondering, these are rod holders, but I've actually modified them because I've got a trolling canopy um, and I modified it so that I didn't have to drill any more holes in the boat. So they're not the best. Um, looking wise and out, but I have ordered two new ones, I just wanted to make sure it would work before I tried it, but it works fine, so, yeah. Last thing to talk about is the light bar. Now, before we stand up and have a look at it, Ross will be laughing at me here now. The very first day we brought this boat home, as I mentioned earlier, it's going to live in our garage, and it didn't fit through the door. So I took it off, I cut all the wires, usual, flung it on the floor, but I didn't need that. I'm going to build a custom one, um, I wanted a low one, double barred, kind of the kind of thing you'd see on a roof rack or a nice floor before. I had all these great ideas, and then didn't bother doing it. But one thing, one positive that came out of that is it now fits in the garage with the standard light bar. Um, and the easiest thing to do is stand up and we'll, we'll talk through it. So, coming on up to the bridge, this is the one that I was going to throw in the bin and then decided to use. Still a standard bridge, um, still got the running lights on the side, on, on, on the been changed to LED. Um, stainless rod holders fitted and the biggest thing is these LED lights they are 18,000 lumens um, these are just 8 inch they're actually fog lights for a 4x4 and then the most important bit is the big 34 inch curved bar on the front equal power um, we have tested them with the battery they do work well they're very very bright and obviously you can tell by the surroundings where they're now we can't show you them but we'll maybe put up a separate video for that but I definitely think it changes the look of the boat, gives us some additional rod storage and whatnot. And yeah, really good. Glad I kept it. Um, anchor light to go on the top there as well. But all the wiring has been hidden in the tube. It was a very tedious job, but I think for the finish and how clean it looks, it was worth it. Um, and all we're left with is we've got a bit of uh, trunk in on the underside there. So no, really, really happy with it. Um, I've seen a, a few guys using the pair specs in the middle for the splash, but. I think at the moment I'll leave it how it is and see how it goes. Just a final recap on what we've been through here today. I just wanted to take everybody around and show them the boat. I know we're in the middle of a field and not in a nice lock, but loads of people have been asking me what's happening and so far up until now I've managed to keep the boat off of social media. So I just wanted to let everybody see it as it is, out of the water, and then we'll progress on through there. I need to thank everybody again that's been involved with it. Davey initially for coming to pick the boat up and maybe without him I wouldn't have had it. Um, and also Brian. Endless thanks to Brian, I owe him so much for everything he's helped me out with and continues to help me with and I hope that I can return the favour and we'll be out fishing my boat next as he done for me and then obviously Ross, he's behind the camera today but he's helped me all the way through with this from cleaning it, to answering questions, to looking on the internet you can imagine if you've ever bought a boat, that is what it is and probably also to my wife if she ever sees this video and hopefully never ever finds out how much money it's cost to get to this stage so moving on for that Please follow us on social media, we're on Instagram, we're on our website scottishwellfishing.co.uk Check us out, we've always got new stuff and it's probably where our stuff, our videos go first Please like and subscribe to the channel, you have no idea how much that wee thumbs up means and a subscribe And also click on the bell for any videos that are coming out so you get them first It really does help, uh, like I mentioned in my previous video, this isn't our business But when you're trying to kind of make YouTube videos and find out if people like them or not, it's a big help Following on for that, fishing isn't allowed in Scotland again within 5 miles, that's a guidance, not a rule, but for us, it doesn't leave us with a lot of options on places that we actually like to go and enjoy fish, especially we want to get the boat out in the water, it's not going to happen, so we'll be waiting for the next phase till that's lifted and we see how the tournament gets on, but just remember, you know, we're not in a hurry, um, we've just came out of this pandemic, I'm certainly not going to go and trip over the top of people just to go fishing, so we'll see where we go with that. Also for us just now, the temperature in Scotland is very, very warm. We predominantly like to fish for pike, so it's not ideal with fish gear, so we'll just keep monitoring that as well. So, 
all I really have got to say is stay safe, remember the country's still having issues, so keep yourself right, and the next time I see you, we will be out on the water. So thanks once again, remember to like and subscribe, have a nice day.